Good afternoon, and welcome to the Joint Senate Committee on Labor and Technology and Health and Human Services. It's Monday, March 20th at 3.35 p.m. So 3 o'clock um, here in conference room 224. I'm Sharon Moriwaki, chair of the committee. With me is Vice Chair Senator Chris Lee uh, and uh, Senator Sanjay Ventura. Here is chair of the Human Services Committee, Health and Human Services Committee chair, um, and well, the other committee members, is returning. Yeah, other members will be here by the time the end starts. Before proceeding, I'd like to make a few housekeeping announcements. Mm -hmm. Hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on live and on demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event that we encounter major technical difficulties, as we did, <laughs> we hope not to have any more, um, then we will reconvene on Wednesday, March 22nd at 3 o'clock in this room, 224. Uh, if there are technical glitches on Zoom, we may have to move on to the next person and written testimony is available at the legislators, legislature's website. Time slot for this hearing is 90 minutes, but we have little time left. Uh, we will be limiting testimony two minutes each. So proceeding, House Bill 339, House Draft 2, relating to exemptions from civil service for positions in the Department of Human Services. Uh, it permanently exempts nine positions in the Department of Human Services. Um, we have Director Betts. Department of Human Services. Thank you for hearing this measure, first of all. Um, I would note, you have a written testimony, but I would note that these critical positions are important for the department in times of administration change, uh, for continuity and to retain uh, institutional knowledge within the director's office. Um, we have many new programs that we've been um, implementing, and these positions are important for that. I'll note that in um, our testimony, we did request an amendment to effectuate the effective date to be effective upon approval. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, we have one written testimony from Jasmine R Ramos, uh, individual in support. Is, is there anyone else on Zoom or in person? Oh, please come forward. Hello, uh, chairs, vice chairs, member of well, Chairs and Vice Chairs, um, Kale Puri, that's Director of Early Learning and Health Policy for Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks. You have our written testimony. We just wanted to stand in support of this measure so that um, we can see the good work of the DHS Director's Office continue. And here for any questions, Mahalo. Thank you. Um, I think that is it. Questions, members? Thank you. Moving on to House Bill 1409, House Draft 2, relating to employee benefits. Uh, this extends under certain conditions the family leave period for up to eight weeks for employees who are unable to perform their employment duties due to the birth of a child who is required to stay in the neonatal intensive care unit and requires the Department of Health to amend rule, its rules to include neonatal care wherever the phrase pregnancy, childbirth, or other related condition is used. Uh, we have um, Jay Butai. Department of Labor. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Moriwaki, uh, Chair San Benaventura, uh, Vice Chair Lee, and Vice Chair Aquino, uh, Jay Butai for DLIR. Uh, we support uh, this measure that amends the Hawaii Family Leave Law uh, by providing up to eight weeks of uh, additional family leave for the birth of a child who is required to stay in a neonatal uh, intensive care unit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have, do we have anyone else here? Please come forward. Are you Todd? Yeah. Oh, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, um, both Chairs Moriyoki and uh, Sanjana Ventura. I'm testifying as a father of two children who were born um, prematurely and had spent time in the neonatal intensive care unit in the queue. Um, and on, on behalf of parents, either uh, here on the island or especially for outer island parents, uh, this kind of job protection and, and you know, extension of this benefit would really greatly benefit um, those families to not have 
to have them choose between you know their work and their child, um, I will refer you to the bill itself to talk about the medical necessity and some of the benefits of it. Um, but I do want to highlight one critical aspect of it, which is that uh, why it's needed is that the mother who's going to be there supporting the child through breast milk expression is going to be expressing that breast milk every two or three hours. And if she stops for even a day to sleep um, through the night, um, that can affect her supply, which is directly related to the child's outcome. So it's a really important um, you know, benefit to be able to not worry about your job while you're trying to provide that care to the child directly um, while they're in the NICU. Um, the other thing I would draw your attention to is just implementation of this. Um, in California, for example, FMLA and their equivalent of our uh, family leave law allows for the leave to be stacked and instead of uh, just being running parallel in some cases uh, parts of that might be good to look at um, in the implementation of this bill so really appreciate your time um, to think about families who are trying to work here and uh, support their children in this uh, difficult time any so, questions uh, thank you anyone else in, in person or on zoom um, so, Mr. Taniguchi, are you saying then that the, the way that we have this written, that there's eight, up to eight weeks is sufficient time? Uh, actually, I, I think no. Um, for the families who have to report their situation for their child, uh, for the situation, uh, in my case, it's just, you know, my family case, it's just uh, three months. Mm -hmm. No, you're gonna test. I need to go on the mic. That way, the people on YouTube can okay. hear. Okay. Um, I'll try to go back to to start really briefly, um, which is that in many cases the situation for the child will extend well beyond the eight weeks, and so no, I don't think eight weeks on its own is sufficient. So anything that can be done to let them be with the child and provide that support for the entirety of their stay, um, and then also have kind of a bonding time. I will make one anecdotal note that in the case of my family, um, soon after uh, my second daughter was discharged, we were put in that situation of either my wife would return to work or lose her job. And so um, that was that meant doing work instead of having that sort of six weeks or 12 weeks to do bonding um, with a young infant. And so it's, it's very difficult. So if, if after eight weeks, um, was, is there any compromise? I think you know, the employer would say, well, sure. you know, three months is a long time, but do you see any way that the eight weeks is, is four weeks more than what, what you have now, but what, what right. would be something that's reasonable, but... I, know, I mean, it, it's very difficult to draw that line, I think, because, because you will be drawing the line for the the families with the child who's the sickest, right? Um, I, I don't know that I have a, a answer other than as much as is reasonable. You know, if it's if it is sort of twelve and twelve for FMLA, if they happen to qualify for that, and then twelve uh, for this, um, twelve would be at least make it equivalent to FMLA in terms of the the, the, the duration. Um, I know I, I obviously can refer you to other countries where. You know that is a year and things like that, but you know within the context of where we are today, um, 12, 16 weeks would be desirable and at least would cover a much larger portion of the population. Thank you. Questions, members? It's testimony, right? I have one testimony. Uh, so Department of Labor. So Mr. Taniguchi says that he thinks 12 weeks might be more reasonable, and that's according to FLSA. Uh, do you have any comments on that, whether we should go eight, 12 weeks or eight weeks is what you think is reasonable uh, from the Labor Department perspective? 
Mm-hmm. Senator, uh, you know, one of the factors that are being cited for the you know the low labor participation is child care. Uh, you know, a lot of mothers have uh, stopped working because you know, they, they cannot find affordable child care. So anyway, we, any way that we can help them, you know, find, uh, you know, deal with uh, child care, I think it will help. So, with, uh, so, so you're saying that we should go up to 12 weeks for neonatal care um, for... Um, because there's this, also, also under current law, there's also there's already a four uh, four weeks of uh, unpaid uh, leave. So if you add the additional eight weeks, so that's twelve weeks. So you're saying eight, 12 weeks. Yes. Okay, that's four weeks now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Are we Senator, done with this yes, bill? we are. Okay. Thank you very well, much. I think we just have one written, yes. and that's in support. Yvonne Warren. Okay. So thank you very much. So for HD, moving on to HD five four seven, relating to early childcare. First up, we have early office on executive office on early learning and support. Yuuko Cross. Hi, Chair Sun Bonaventura and Moriwaki and Vice Chairs and Committee Member. Um, I'm Yuko Arikawa Cross, Director of the Executive Office on Early Learning. Um, we support the intent of HB 547 HD1 and defer to the Department of Human Services. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much. Next is the Early Learning Board. Robert Peters in support. Kathy Betts, Department of Human Services, providing comments. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chair, and Senator Awa. I'm Scott Morishiga, Administrator of the Benefit Employment and Support Services Division on behalf of DHS. We send our testimony supporting intent and offering comments. Um, we do provide in our testimony of recommended um, general fund appropriation amount, and we ask that if the measure proceeds it be effective after December 31st, 2023. Thank you for the opportunity to Thank you. Next, we have Attorney General providing comments. Jane, oh, okay, you're not on Zoom. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Member of the Committee. I'm Melissa Coloni, Deputy Attorney General. We have comments today. Um, we're just requesting a deletion of a semicolon in the definition of private educational institution. I'm happy to elaborate further if you'd like. Um, otherwise, we have for any questions you may have. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Next, we have Angelina Mercado, Hawaii State Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Support. Angelina, no, I don't, I didn't see her. Okay, Joshua Wedge, come on up. Holomua Collaborative in support. Hello, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Committee Members. Um, Holomua Collaborative sees this as uh, an evidence-based, collaborative, uh, and innovative approach, and we stand on our testimony in support. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify, and thanks for hearing the bill. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Early Childhood Action Strategy and Support, Vivian Eto. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Vivian Eto, and I'm here on behalf of Early Childhood Action Strategy, speaking in strong support of HB 547. Um, you have our written testimony. There are just a few points I wanted to highlight or add. Uh, we believe you're well informed of the child care workforce crisis we are facing and the need to deploy some strategies to prevent the loss of capacity in our child care and early learning programs, let alone facilitate growth and expansion. Um, according to the most recent National Child Care Workforce Index, financial re relief strategies addressing workforce compensation, such as that proposed by this bill, are being implemented by 37 different states. States such as Virginia, Louisiana, and North Carolina, among others, have reported significant di differences in turnover and retention as a result of these kinds of programs, in some cases seeing turnover rates cut in half or more. As a, small, as a smaller sector of our childcare programs with the lowest paid workforce and most dire staffing challenges and capacity needs, our infant toddler childcare programs provide an ideal opportunity 
for piloting a wage stipend strategy and shoring up care for our youngest Keiki. We urge you to support this measure as a first step toward improving wages for our childcare and early learning professionals and an opportunity to stabilize a part of the system where we are at great risk of losing capacity and re reducing families' access to the childcare they need. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and please know I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Next we have Hawaii Children's Action Network Speak Skill for Realists and Support. Uh, Chairs, Vice Chair, Senator Awa. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Keoku Rilich, Director of Early Learning and Health Policy for Hawaii Children's Action Network Sport, uh, Speaks. Um, we stand in strong support of this measure. Thank you very much for hearing this bill today. Um, you have our testimony. Um, happy to elaborate on any other points that you that you have that or questions that you may have. Um, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. First, um, we did provide an estimated appropriation amount, so that way you can make an uh, informed decision in moving it forward to the Ways and Means Committee. Um, second, I want to mention that there's been a significant uh, there's been significant attention paid to expanding the early childhood care and education opportunities for families here. Um, and between 2018 and 2020, pre-pandemic, we lost 20 percent of our workforce. And so if we want to continue to open up classrooms, whether that's in the zero to three range or the three to five range, we need to start looking at shoring up and retaining the workforce that we have today. So um, this is one way we think it's, you know, as others have pointed out, it's evidence based. Um, it's worked in other states and we think it's a good start so that as we start to open up more classrooms in the coming years, we'll be able to actually have the teachers to fill those classrooms. Here to answer any questions, mahalo again for the opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Michael Galoya, Senior Rainbow Family 808 and Support, Diana Boncina, um, Stepping Stones Academy and Support, Josh Feldman, Tor of Tori Richard LTD and Support, Ryan Kusumoto of Patch and Support, Brandon Curiso for AIO and Support, Megan Fox for Malama Kawai and Support, Younghee Overly for AAUW and Support, Dennis Lynn for HPM. In support, Shady Naderi, Little Hoku Montessori Academy, and support Yuli Yonker, Hawaii Gas, and support Michael Pritch of Title Guarantee of Hawaii, and support Moebanu Jameson, and support. Aloha, chairs, vice chairs, and members of the committee. My name is Moebanu Jameson. Thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony on HB 547. Um, although early childhood education, care and education professionals in Hawaii are in high demand, the number of professionals in this sector has been decreasing significantly over the last five years. As a student at University of Hawaii Manoa, I know of a fellow student who received her degree in early childhood education but is currently working a retail job because her um, job as an early childhood educator was not giving her a livable wage. Her story is not unique and it is sad to see people with a passion caring for caring for children and infants and toddlers who are so needed in our community are being driven out of their employment to other employment. As a community member, I strongly believe that we should have measures in place that support a healthy, robust early learning system. Taking care of our keiki means we must take care of those who care for them as we cannot expect them to be able to provide quality care without proper compensation. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. And, and I appreciate you folks trying to keep your um, testimony to one minute. I know earlier it's two minutes, but you know we had a 40 minute delay and we, there is an upcoming here at 4.30. So if you could keep your testimony to one minute, I'd Really appreciate that. Okay, next up we have um, Rhea Esteban in support. Aloha Chairs, Vice Chairs and Committee Members. I'm Raya Stevan, Project Specialist for the Hawaii Early Childhood Educator Excellence and Equity Project at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I support this bill strongly. Um, before taking on this role, I was a preschool teacher myself and I was surrounded by so many teachers who were amazing at caring for and educating young children and cultivating their genuine joy and love for learning. Parents would ask us all the time, how do you do that? And the answer is that being an early educator requires specialized skills, years of learning, uh, years of training, and unyielding commitment. Unfortunately, many of my colleagues sought employment in countries where early educators were being paid more, or they had to take on multiple jobs, or they had to leave the field altogether, which was a shame because it also meant leaving behind their children and their families. 
Early educators should not face poverty level wages as a consequence of pursuing their passion for educating our future generation of leaders and providing parents the opportunity to report to work with a peace of mind, knowing that their children are in good hands. So I appeal to you to support this measure, not just for Hawaii's early educators, but for their keiki and their families. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Okay, Perry Locke in support. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, and committee members. Yeah, I stand in strong support of this measure. Um, as the, I'm Terry Locke at the University of Hawaii College of Education. I run a project called Ex 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 Early Childhood Educator Excellence and Equity Project. This project commissioned the Brand Corporation to do a study on our licensed childcare homes and um, licensed childcare centers and regulated homes. And it was about wages benefits, working conditions. We have multiple um, test, uh, quotes from uh, child care workers and teachers who talked about the challenges of working in this field, the field that they love, but they often have had to go get another job in order to compensate for, the, to, for, for, for living. And so any, um, if you have, if you are, um, so anyway, we have a study and we have be more than happy to share the results of the study and that many states have undergone uh, wage supplement programs, which has really been a benefit to keeping our workers in place. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, Key Lo in support. Thank you very much. Okay, we have 20 other individuals all in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 547? Members, any questions? Okay, come on up. Hello, uh, Chair, Vice Chairs, um, Senators. Thank you so much. My name is Malia Suchia. I'm here in testimony in support of HB 547 because I'm not a preschool teacher today because I have kids that need to eat and it's just not feasible to be a preschool teacher today. I love it, it's my passion, I enjoy it, it brings me joy, it doesn't pay the bills. My aide, my assistants, my director, everybody's left. Everybody that I know who loves this industry has left this industry. And now I have a two-year-old and he's on a waiting list that takes two years. It costs about $2,000 for him to go to school and there's no teachers to teach it, even if, even if the payment was payable. And so I really employ you to you know, really consider passing this bill. It's been evidenced to be successful in a number of other states. Um, I know my time is nearly up, but you know, and then I have a 17 year old who is not even considering staying in Hawaii because he can't have kids here because he can't raise young children here. And so again, um, I support HB 547 and I please hope that you will continue to move it along. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay, um, anybody else wishing to testify on HB 547? One more. Well, thank you, chairs and, and vice chairs and, and committee members. I'm strongly in support. I'm Jeff Bach, sorry. Jeff Bach, I am a director of uh, UHMCC at the University of Hawaii. Uh, we cannot open a infant, center, uh, an infant slots because we simply don't have the people to be able to do it. They don't want to do it because they can make more money at Starbucks and then they have to get trained and then they have to play with diapers and clean and those kinds of things. It's actually easier to work in the retail. It's easier to work at Starbucks than it is to, to work with us. We need the support. We need the, the subsidy to, in order to stabilize what we're doing and move it forward. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 547? Okay, seeing none. Members, any questions? Okay, seeing none. Next up. Eight, uh, moving on, HB 777, which is relating to background checks. First up, Department of Human Services, Kathy Betts, and support. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee, Kathy Betts, the DHS. Um, I'll stand on our written testimony and support, noting some of our concerns with the HD2 language. However, if the committees are inclined to pass this measure forward, we would be happy to work on language moving forward. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Kirby Shaw of DCAB in support. Marcus Kawataki, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, providing comments. 
and six other individuals in support. Members, any questions? Seeing none, do we need to recess for decision making? Okay, so okay. for LVP. Okay, so we will go into um, any of these um, bills passing out um, will include the necessary technical non-substantive. Oh, we don't have to oh. Okay, we have to recess. Oh. Well, no, what about well, you can, you can. We can do HHS. Yeah. Okay, so we're calling the DM out of order since HHS has quorum. Okay, and that would be for HB 547 HD1. Chair's recommendation is to pass this with amendments. Um, first up, we're going to accept the AG's amendment of removing the semicolon or colon or <laughs> semicolon, whatever that amendment was. Okay, um, and we and clarify for SMA um, on page six, line eight. We're going to remove the phrase from the date of termination. We are also going to um, put an effective date of December 31, 2023. And we're going to note in the committee report um, DHS's request of $6,336,000 for the blank appropriation. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moore Yeah. We, we're going to defer the DM. No, 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 no. You, you need to vote. You cannot talk now. It's voting. Oh, oh for your... Uh, yes, HHS. Oh, aye. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks. you very much. Senator Shimabukuro. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Thank you very much. Recognition is adopted, Chair. Yes, and I understand LVT will be deferring to decision made making on the pending pending um, quorum. Correct. Okay. For HB seven 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 HD two, chair's recommendation is to pass this with um, SMA and DHS's proposed amendments and putting a defective date of June 30, 2050, um, because there's a lot of grammar and numbering that DHS wants done. So otherwise, any comments, questions, concerns, seeing none, vice chair for the vote. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, chair. Okay, so. Okay, hold on. We want LB HHS to vote on. Okay. And then we will. Okay, so but then you have to tell us what you're commended. Okay, we are going to call what is the what do you want? 1409 HB 1409 House H Draft 2. HB 1409 HHS will make its decision making and Good. based upon chair of LBT's recommendation and what's your recommendation? Recommendation is to um, pass with amendments and we're going to take the amendment that uh, we will um, have eight weeks instead of the... Uh, no, that's not an amendment, that's the current law. Current I'm bill. sorry, we're going to go up to 12 weeks instead of the eight weeks in the current draft. Uh, on section In section two, um, subsection E on page five, and uh, we will continue to uh, defect the date. I don't agree with that because oh, <laughs> there's already a four weeks in there and we don't have the insurance. So no, it's we, we, we need to do a recess, okay, sorry. Recess. The bill uh, as is uh, House Draft Two, and we will um, we will con uh, also go with a defect date of June 30, 30, 32. Okay, so um, so we will defer our decision. Okay, so for health, human services. Oh, oh we, oh, have, we, we have, have we have quorum. Oh, we have quorum. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we'll, we'll go ahead and, and vote on, on that. Okay, so, so, so this is HB 1409, House Draft 2, uh, Chair votes aye with recommendations uh, to amend. Thank you. Voting on HB 1409, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Senator Ihara and Keith Agron excuse. Senator Favela? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. So for Health and Human Services, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay. Uh, noting everyone is present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. But I'm going to go back to House Bill 339, House Draft 2, regarding exemptions for civil service for positions in the Department of Human Services uh, with the uh, recommended amendments that we discussed earlier. Chair votes aye. Good on HB 339, recommendation is passed with amendments. Noting uh, Senators Ihara and Keith Agron excused, are there any reservations or no's? If not, recommendations adopted. Okay. Senator Senate. Yeah, we'll go to yours. Yeah. So for Health and Human Services, same recommendation. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay. So for, you got to vote for 5.7. Yes, yeah, we already voted. Okay. Okay, so now for House Bill 547, House Draft 1, relating to uh, early child care with amendments from the Health and Human Services Committee. Chair votes aye. Voting HB 547, recommendation to pass with amendments, noting excused absence of Senators Ihara and Keith Agron. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, recommendation stop. Okay. Same thing. Okay. So, so for House Bill 777, House Draft 2, relating to background checks, uh, same amendments as uh, Health and Human Services Committee. Chair votes aye. Voting HB 777. Recommendation to pass with amendments, noting excused absence of Senators Ihar and Keith Agron. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, recommendation adopted. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. This is the uh, Labor Committee, uh, Labor and Technology Committee, the 305 agenda. Um, we are going, um, since you all know the um, protocol here on, on uh, testifying, uh, we're going to go straight into SCR 120, which is requesting the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations to collect data relating to the development of an information technology workforce in Hawaii, evaluate the collected data, and develop a strategy to provide better information technology training. Uh, first up is the Labor Department, Mr. Botai. Aloha, Chair Moriwaki, uh, Vice Chair Lee, and Senator Pavela, uh, Jane Botai for DLIR. Uh, we stand on our uh, testimony in support of intent and offers comments on this measure. Uh, to collect and evaluate data and develop a strategy to provide better information technology training. Uh, we're willing to take the lead in some of the responsibilities required by this resolution, uh, partner with others to assemble and evaluate other data points and collaborate on findings and recommendations and submitting a report to the 2024 uh, legislature. Uh, we also want to offer the additional comments on page two, uh, line 24, uh, after uh, labor and industrial relations uh, in collaboration uh, with uh, DBED and UH. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Just, just for clarification, so on, uh, is that page two or page three? Page two. Page two. Line, line 24, 24 after the labor and industrial relations and you are adding your uh, amending to in collaboration you know after labor uh -huh. relations in, in collaboration with tibet and uh or university of hawaii okay thank you, thank you. Uh, anyone else here to testify uh anyone on zoom 
Okay, um, moving on to SCR 121, urging the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations to identify state job classifications for which a degree or career and technical education certificate from a community college may substitute for an Associate of Arts degree. Um, Mr. Botai, you're up again. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we stand on our testimony in support of this measure uh, and we'll work with others to identify state job classifications for which a degree or career and technical education certificate from a community college may substitute for an associate uh, of arts degree. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else here to testify on this measure? Uh, no one on Zoom? Uh, Okay, uh, last resolution is SCR 208 and SR 148 requesting the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations to provide and produce updated actuarial studies regarding the lifespan probabilities of surviving dependent beneficiaries for the purpose of applying Hawaii's workers' compensation law. Um, I think you're up again, Chair Butai. Oh, you had a question. Okay. Aloha, Chair. Jade Butai for DLIR. We stand on our testimony in support uh, of this measure to research and obtain updated data for the purpose of assessing appropriate uh, benefit amounts to surviving dependent uh, beneficiaries. I would like to note that uh, we will require funding to procure a contract uh, to fulfill these obligations. In uh, and six additional time to present the findings. So how much funding would you, have you estimated what it would cost to do a study such as this? Let me, uh, if you don't mind, Chair, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Joanne Biddenhart, she's our mm -hmm. Administrator for Disability Compensation Division. <coughs> Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Joanne Bittenhar, Administrator for Disability Compensation Division. We are still trying to figure out what that amount will be. Um, from our past history, a study such as this costs anywhere from uh, three hundred fifty to 500000 So we really want to um, identify the area that we want to zone in on so that we're not doing a whole broad assessment. So you... So there's nothing that you can do currently without any funding for this? Correct. Okay. Right, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Um, we could stay there. I have there. a follow up question on that. Okay, oh. Yeah, you should have raised it when we have the bill to be heard. I mean, if you need funding, we could have taken care of that then. I mean, you're not, you don't think it's important to update, you know, standards that were set back in the 60s? I do think it's important. I think that the building. Well, I want to hear it from the director. Oh, okay. I mean, this, I he's the one that's up for confirmation, right? Yeah. Yes. No, I, I, you know, I do think it's important, Chair. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, you said it in the '60s, so I think, uh, you know, the more information we can get, uh, the better for the program. You know. And there are no resources in the department that could accommodate something like this. No, we don't, we don't have the not for that. Okay, and that's your position? I mean, we can look uh, for you know, additional, you know, for, um, you know, where we can find uh, savings. All right, good luck. Okay, so, so um, you have no capacity to do this in your department or you, you know, because we did have the bill that Senator Gidad Ron said. Um, previously, and uh, this was not brought up so that we could, in fact, add it to the bill that was before us. Because resolutions don't carry money, but if you have at least some started in, in terms of your capacity of putting together what you might need, that, you, you don't have that as well. I mean, we can look for, uh, you know, I mean, there's always some, you know, look at some savings, look at some of our our existing. 
Okay, anyone else with questions on that? Um, I'm going to go back to um, SCR 121, Senator Fabella. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Yeah. Um, this is um, you need to do all this um, requesting information and all that. Um, are you going to put in here? Um, sorry. From there. Anyway, um, putting in here, I don't see any kind of study or any kind of information that I've seen these departments to help you all with the minimum wage tax credit because previously in here, we had no complaints to the Department of Labor. But I asked the industry and I asked a lot of people whose um, minimum wage are getting penalized. They don't know how. Sorry. They don't, they don't know how to uh, get in touch or whatever. So are you going to try to implement that within this um, information technology uh, work, work, workforce? Because there is nothing right now to uh, far as they know, or any kind of educational program to find out how to put in a complaint or recommendation that they feel that, you know, like right now, ZPs are charging kitchen charge and they, the waitresses and waiters are still getting penalized. So is there any way you can implement that going forward into this? Yeah, this bill? is for the IT. This, uh, this is, training. yeah, just right. focusing on 120. You're not going to implement, but I'm saying you're going to do the IT training, I understand that. So there's any way of, within, within the training that they're going to be trained in that capacity because you can do IT training, but they leave that out because um, chair never know and I never know that there was no way of knowing how to put in one complaint to your department. Do you can you can provide that for us right now? Yeah, we could. Uh, oh, where can we go? could maybe do more, uh, you know, educational outreach on how you can file a complaint with, uh, you know, if there's a minimum wage violation. Yeah. Sorry, Chair. That's, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go right into decision making. Okay. Uh, for uh, SCR 120, requesting the department to uh, collect data on mm -hmm. IT information technology and to provide better technology training. Uh, the chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Members' questions? Okay, the chair votes. Oh. oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. This is um, I, my error. This is the one where uh, the uh, department asked to collaborate with Department of Business and Economic Development and the University of Hawaii. So with that amendment, um, Passing with amendment. Okay, voting on SCR 120 recommendation to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Senator Ihar excused. Senator Keith Agaron? Yes. And Senator Favela? Yep. Chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you. SCR 121 urging the department to um, identify state job classifications for which a degree or career um, and technical education certificate from a community college may substitute for the associate of arts degree. Uh, the chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Members' questions? Question. Voting on SCR 121 recommendation to pass unamended, noting Senator Ihar excused any reservations or no's. If not, chair recommendations adopted. And tech, pass with amendments with technical amendments, sorry been corrected on the last measure. Uh, for SCR 208 and S, oh, so let's retake the vote on SCR 121 uh, on the job classifications for career and technical education. Uh, we are passing that with amendments, with technical amendments. Chair Voltai. Thanks, no excused absence of Senator Ihara. Are there any reservations or notes? Not the recommendations adopted. Okay, so for SCR 208 and SR 148, requesting the department to okay, pr produce updated actuarial studies regarding lifespan probabilities, um, the chair's recommendation is to pass both SCR 208 and SR 148 um, 
with amendment that the department work on this during the interim so that we can, in fact, have um, a study on, on updating the workers' compensation law. Um, the chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments, with technical amendments as well. Going on SCR 208 and SR 148, noting uh, Senator Yahar excused. Are there any reservations or no's? If not, recommendations about them. Okay, uh, and with that, the business is concluded. This hearing is adjourned. Thank you.